Hey folks, it's Ard Wolf. Welcome. I'm going to uh, do something I haven't done before on the channel and uh, chit chat a little bit about war games, the war gaming I've been doing, the war gaming I just got finished doing, and uh, the recent acquisitions that I've made. So let me talk about this first because it's a timely subject at the moment. This is my former Oregon Laminations Deluxe Corner Rounder. As you can see, I broke it. Um, this is not a problem that I alone have had, and the issue seems to me to be an engineering problem with the design. Um, this hammer here, I'll call it a hammer, or a lever if you will, presses down on this moving plate, which provides the cutting action on the device. Um, this is just made of plastic. There's no supporting metal infrastructure in here to keep this from breaking. Um, I know many people have raved about how good these things are, and it did produce good results. Um, however, um, I think this is pretty much a design flaw, and unless you have a super light hand, and I, I apparently don't, um, I think you're going to break this thing eventually. Um, I, I actually made a video about it, which I did not post and am not going to, which is basically 10 minutes of me ranting about uh, shoddy construction and quality control and terrible design and all that stuff. So um, what I did, why I held off on posting that video was because I wanted to talk to Orchid Laminations first. Uh, I am happy to report that I am pleased with the Organ Laminations customer service response. I do have a replacement on the way. Um, it is not this model. It is the regular non-deluxe model, which has its own issues. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plan on doing a video. I wanted to do a video on this thing, and by the time I got around to it, I broke it. So uh, I will do a video talking about both devices at some point in the not-too-distant future. But for now, let's uh, put this busted thing aside, and I'll talk about... Uh, what I've picked up recently, which is kind of a lot, actually. Uh, my birthday was in May, and I basically blew all the birthday money on war games. Um, this I actually picked up because I got a great deal on it. This is Jeff Horger's Maneuver from GMT. It's kind of like a chessy type game. Um, not really my thing per se, but it strikes me as a fantastic introductory game to war games, probably better than, say, one of the Commands and Colors games, although I'd be willing to uh, accept arguments to the contrary, uh, but it's it's in that ballpark, and as such, um, I, I actually uh, can't wait to get this on the table. I have not had the chance to do so yet. So this looks pretty cool. Um, also for my birthday, I went to the local gaming store and picked this guy up, Paths of Glory. I did so after having played a, a really engaging game of For the People, which I hadn't played before. Um, this is vaguely in the same ballpark, but for World War One, um, which is a nominally a conflict I'm a little more interested in than the American Civil War. Um, however, that's a problem because after playing For the People, I'm now interested in the American Civil War, and I now have about four games on it, and some books too. So, plenty to do here. Um, there's a good uh, chance there'll be a video on this pretty soon. Stuka Joe has a uh, uh, method for playing these card-driven games solitaire uh, that looks very interesting. He's got a play, complete play through the first turn. Um, I may do something with that or make, make some modifications to it. I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't uh, figured it out yet. But I do plan on getting this to the table sometime in the pretty near future. Um, so what else has come up? So there's a Pay It Forward group on BoardGameGeek that uh, some of you are probably aware of. There's also one on Facebook. And on my birthday, I won this thing. SPQR Deluxe. It is massive and incredibly heavy, and I didn't really pay much attention to uh, to what it was running. But and it, I mean, I haven't even clipped this whole thing yet. It's it's just got a crazy amount of stuff in it. Plus a bunch of simple great battles of history stuff. Um, pretty playable. The battles haven't really taken a super close look at the system yet. I know some people have difficulty grasping it. Um, it doesn't look terribly difficult to me, um, but. I may want to do a, a video on this, and I have noticed that there's a, there's been quite a few uh, videos and posts about the Great Battles of History series uh, in circulation lately, which is interesting. I don't know if that means anything or not, but it's not like Great Battles of Alexander Deluxe just came out. So since I had acquired that, I went and placed an order with cool stuff for this guy to Caesar Conquest of Gaul. As far as ancients are concerned, I am primarily interested in uh, Roman stuff, um, so this kind of fit into that category. Uh, I would also like to pick up uh, Caesar at Elysia, but I'll uh, or the the Great Battles of History, uh, Battle of Elysia, I think it's called, about that uh, particular campaign. So on the subject of uh, Civil War games, I picked this guy up, Battle Above the Clouds. This is from MMP, part of the Great Campaigns of the American Civil War series. And I gotta say, 
out of these book covers are pretty friggin' stunning. Um, counters look good. The maps are, of course, phenomenal, as they have always been in this series, back, straight back to the Avalon Hill days, even when the counters were typical Avalon Hill, substandard, we printed it in-house so we don't care type stuff. Um, so I haven't done anything with this yet. Obviously, it's unpunched. Um, I, I do plan to get to this at some point in the not-too-distant future. Conquest of Gaul is also unpunched. Um, so last this past weekend was Origins in Columbus, Ohio. I live in Columbus, Ohio. I don't have any particularly good excuse to not go to Origins. And I do a lot of different types of games besides Wargaming. Um, and indeed, there is a lot of different types of games besides Wargaming available at Origins. But if you hear people saying there's no Wargaming at Origins anymore, they are incorrect. Um, in the main gaming hall, there's a group called Grogheads, which I'll try to provide a link to in the notes. Um, they basically ran a, a, a quite hopping war game area featuring some GMT stuff and some other stuff. Um, and thanks to them, I walked out of the con uh, just really flabbergasted that I won three things um, pretty much from them. So one of the things that I won was Elusive Victory. Now you can see I haven't taken the shrink wrap off yet. This is the Air War over the Suez Canal, 67 to 73. This is not a conflict I'm terribly interested in. I was joking around that uh, since I'm only 1 16th Jewish, I'm only 1 16th interested in this. I'm also not terribly into air games. However, this has had a pretty good reception and it looks decent, so the chances of me at least opening it and looking at it are very good. I just haven't gotten around to doing that yet. Um, so, thanks to Grog Heads for that. Thanks also to Grog Heads for the other big prize, which is this guy, which won't even fit in the friggin' frame. Old School Tactical. Now, uh, this is yet another World War II squad level type game, which is a fairly crowded corner of the market. Um, not sure there's space for it, but that said, having looked at it, it looks pretty good. And the components are, sorry about the camera jostle. Let me just try and fix that. Uh, the component quality is really, really high. You get these cards, which are like playing, uh, playing card quality cards. You got nice pre-rounded counters, and you've got these massive, massive boards. These are not even like standard size boards. They're like oversized from that. So, I mean, these these hang over the edges of my wargaming table a little bit. Um, I did uh, open it up, push some counters around, but I haven't really gotten the hang of it yet. It does look pretty decent, actually. Um, two of the things that I managed to play at Origins were Conflict of Heroes, which I hadn't tried before, and Lock and Load Tactical, which I also hadn't tried before. Um, and I was very fa I, w I, I liked Conflict of Heroes, but I was very favorably impressed with Lock and Load. And this looks to me like it's kind of in the Lock and Load ballpark. So I do look forward to, uh, to breaking this down. Um, and I look forward to seeing what Flying Pig, the publisher, has uh, in store for the future of this system. It does look interesting, and, and the box is, is a brick. I was joking with uh, folks at uh, Grogheads that uh, if you bought the game, you got a free burrow to carry it around the rest of the convention with. And I carried it around for quite a bit, and boy, my back can tell. So I picked up a couple of small things at Origins 2. Um, Actually, both of them from Decision Games. Uh, one of these is uh, Leipzig from uh, Decision. It's part of their Folio Games uh, system. And this was 25 bucks, which is full retail. They don't really offer anything at a discount at Origins. Uh, but it's got a full-size map. It's got a full-size counter sheet. So 280 counters. Um, there's some markers that you're going to probably have to jury rig because there's not enough of them. Uh, but other than that, I didn't have a battle on uh, a, a game on this particular battle, which is an interesting battle. Um, if you don't know, and I'm guessing that you do, um, the Battle of Leipzig in 19, uh, 1814 was the battle... Uh, that Napoleon lost the first time that got him exiled to uh, Elba in the first place. So, or in, in the long run anyway. This looks like an interesting game. I'm going to put this in some kind of box type thing. I'm not really a fan of storing Ziploc games on the shelf, but that's not uh, much of a big deal. Um, also an issue with the next pickup, which is Strategy and Tactics 299. Um, this is the first new, or almost new, it's the last, last, the last issue, uh, strategy and tactics that I've bought since like probably 1981. Um, it, this is a solitaire game from Joe Miranda on the First Crusade, and the map looks pr reasonably pretty. Um, it looks quite interesting. There was some talk about it on the Facebook War Gamers group, which is a, kind of a hopping place if you don't know. Um, and uh, this game looks really interesting. I'm interested in the First Crusade anyway, um, so I cannot wait to get uh, to get this on the table. And I would uh, say. 
that there's a fairly decent chance there'll be some video on this, especially since it's solitaire. Um, so I just need to uh, get it punched, which is, of course, waiting for my replacement punch. So there's not a whole lot I can do about that. So what awesome games. What am I most excited about of the stuff between the game uh, during the birth with the birthday money and the stuff I picked up at Origins? Well, one of those things is Paths of Glory. Uh, I'm super excited to pay, play Paths of Glory, um, but... I got it like a month ago, so the most exciting things that I have acquired is this thing, Field Commander Napoleon. Now, perhaps you've seen the box on this, but it's massive, and um, this game comes very highly recommended. It is a solitaire game, as are all the Field Commander uh, games. This one is the most interesting of them to me, um, and it's huge. You get like seven mounted maps in here. It's crazy, and a tons of counters, and one of the cool things, and I haven't finished clipping this yet, and I'm not even going to open the box, but... One of the interesting things is that there are no duplicate counters. So you can completely separate your counters for the 1796 scenario and keep them in their own bag, and your counters for the 1812 scenario in their own bag, and then the 1815 goes in their own bag, and then there's some shared counters that you use throughout the game that you won't probably want to keep in a tray, which is how I'm doing it. Uh, but top, 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 top quality components on this thing. It's, it's crazy. And I want to say this was there was either a pre-order or a Kickstarter deal. I know there's a mounted battle board that some people have, but uh, this just come, comes with the cardstock one. But I'm happy. I got this from Cool Stuff, actually, at Origins, and I am very happy with the purchase. Um, the other very exciting thing I picked up was another new series for me. This is the Grand Tactical series from MMP. Um, this is the most reasonably priced of the in-print ones, which I think amounts to this and uh, The Greatest Day, which is humongous. Uh, but again, I got a pretty good deal on this. And uh, it comes with... I kind of picked through this. Uh, Multiman's got a weird thing they do where they uh, like alternate counter sheets and maps and charts and tables and stuff, but uh, it also has a very handsome uh, rule book. There's a series rule book here, and then there's a Where Eagles Dare um, uh, series specific rules. Most of this is, this is like probably like 64 pages or something like that. Eh, 48 pages. Uh, but it's mostly scenarios. Uh, 11 counter sheets of 5 8 inch counters, so it's it's packed. Uh, the maps, which I'm not going to lay out, but I may, may do a video on one of the smaller scenarios here. And the smallest scenario is really quite small. Um, so it looks very, uh, very viable for a video. Um, for the full game, I have, haven't anything like enough space to set this thing up, so uh, forget that. But that aside, um, this game looks really interesting. I, I figured this would be the best entry point for the Grand Tactical system for me. I know they have a game on Crete coming. Um, and I might look at that too, but uh, but this was uh, this was it, it was it was too good to pass up, and I would really like to get this to the table. Although it's it's a, there's a it's a project to uh, to get it all uh, set up and ready to go. And how I'm going to store this thing, I have the vaguest idea. So we'll uh, we'll deal with that at some point. So I played at Origins uh, a game of a distant plane, which uh, which went really well. Uh, unexpectedly to me, it was a team game, um, and some rules modifications were made to accommodate that. Uh, but it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, the coin games I like in general. Um, you may or may not consider them war games. I don't particularly care about that kind of semantic distinction. Um, it's a war-y type game. It falls under the broader umbrella of war games, and I'm happy with that definition. Um, so that went really well. Like I said, I did play uh, Conflict of Heroes. I played 1775 Rebellion, also from Academy Games, which is a, I, I would call a straight Euro, but it, it, it is a, a war-themed Euro and plays a little bit war gamey. I found it to be a very interesting design. Um, I'm not sure I'm ready to say much specific about it. I would like to play it some more um, because it seems to me like it's a zero-sum push-pull thing between the two sides. Um, interestingly, it's not a two-player game. It is, of course, about the American Revolution. Um, and it is a four-faction game. One player, uh, two players are on one side playing the uh, Revolutionary Army and the, uh, the Patriot Militia. And the other side is uh, two players playing the Redcoats and the Tory Militia, the Loyalist Militia. And there are non-player factions, American Indians, um, the Hessians, and the French that can come in uh, in different ways. And it was, it was quite an interesting game. Um, you, it, it's set up in such a way that you will like play through the entire deck, and each faction has its own deck. So it's just a matter of time before any specific thing comes up. So I'd, I'd really like to give it a couple more plays to see how uh, 
to see how that shakes out. Um, that that said to me that uh, positioning and strategy was 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 going to be important. Um, so like I said, I'd like to try it some more. Um, as I also mentioned, I did try Lock and Load Tactical. I am very favorably impressed with that game as a, sort of a light alternative to ASL that uh, Panzer Grenadier failed to be. Um, I, I, I thought about picking some of that stuff up, but that kind of came up a little too late in the con. I had already blown my budget. So uh, uh, it did not happen. And I, my understanding is that they are uh, representing some of the materials anyway, so I may wait. Um, and the one that I wanted to pick up, which is Heroes of Normandy, is the uh, the one that they ran out of. So uh, all that aside, I walked out of the con without any lock and load products, but it is on my radar for the future. I liked it quite a bit. Um, if you don't know where Eagles Dare is the southern half of Operation Market Garden, where uh, in late 19, uh, 1944, uh, British and American uh, paratroops uh, dropped uh, in enemy territory to hold three bridges, one at Arnhem, one at Nijmegen, and one at... Uh, uh, crap, I can't remember the other one, even though I just saw it. Um, so there's there's three bridges, and there's an, uh, a, a large allied spearhead that has to make it all the way up the road to Arnhem to relieve the last group of paratroopers, the British paratroopers, um, and they don't make it. So the, the companion game, The Devil's Cauldron, deals with the conflict in and around Arnhem. Um, now, I'm not the biggest expert on this campaign, but I have seen um, seen the movie, so there's that. Uh, this is the Hell's Highway part, which I think is a little more technically interesting, but no, I haven't seen Devil's, Devil's Cauldron, so I could be mistaken. Um, the less dramatic part of it, perhaps, uh, because the, 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 the Allied column was, uh, was plagued by delays, and they didn't make some bridges in time, and um, if you... Uh, if you haven't seen the movie, the name of which is el eluding me right now, which I'm really embarrassed by, because um, it's like one of my favorite war movies, but I've been talking for too long here and uh, at the end of a rather exhausting day, so forgive me, uh, a, uh, a Bridge Too Far is the name of the movie. It's uh, made, in, I think, in the mid-70s, and it's a really very cool game. Um, if anybody is a role player, I might as well mention the one role-playing product I did pick up at Origins, which is this which is another heavy, heavy, heavy monstrosity. The Horror on the Orient Express campaign for Call of Cthulhu. Um, I couldn't pass this up for the price it was being offered at. And um, there are deals. If somebody tells you there's no deals in the Dealers of Origins, they are also incorrect. But you do have to look for them, just like the war games. Uh, massive campaign. I mean, this is like solid books in here, plus some props and maps and handouts and all kinds of. I mean, it comes with a matchbox and a and like the pro the writer's program for the actual Orient Express. So it's pretty crazy looking. I don't know if I'm ever gonna run this or even try to run this, but it it, it does look awesome. Um, and like I said, for the price I got it for, I could not say no. So that's my one role playing acquisition of the campaign of the convention. I did play some other RPGs. I played the One Ring RPG from Cubicle Seven, which was a lot of fun. Um, not 100% sure that had much to do with the game system. It was very well run. Um, that is the, the more important factor. And I played a game called Blades in the Dark, which you can search YouTube for and get some uh, get some uh, some Let's Play videos. Um, and that was really fun too. Um, if you are into like indie and or story-driven RPGs, then I'm going to recommend stopping by Games on Demand. They are at Origins and Gen Con and maybe some other conventions, uh, but they'll definitely be at Gen Con. And it's basically like uh, a big room, you wait in line, and when you get to the table, there's uh, a menu, and you pick a game, and you go to that table that that game is running at, and when that game fills up, it starts running. Um, and typically... Uh, it's it's super well attended at Origins. I've been there a couple of times now. I have never failed to uh, to have a great time. You do want to show up a minimum of about 45 minutes early. Um, I showed up half an hour early and ended up uh, shut out of anything that I wanted to play, but that's because I'm a snob. Um, so yeah, by all means, check out Games on Demand. If you're going to Gen Con, do check that out. Uh, if Also, if anybody says that nobody plays these artsy fartsy indie story game RPGs, they're also wrong. Um, and you don't have to look particularly hard for people playing those. So that's that's the wrap. Um, I hope you have enjoyed watching. I do plan on doing some more uh, some more board wargaming videos. I don't have any particular plans to do any role playing type uh, videos. I'm I'm that's not to say that I, 
I won't, definitely, but I don't have any plans to do so. But as you can see, I've got a whole bunch of Wargame stuff that uh, that could hit the table in the very near future. So stay tuned. I hope that uh, if you're not already, that you subscribe to the channel and keep an eye out for new videos from me, because there'll be some other stuff coming soon. Um, very soon, you'll probably see... Some, well, I should say, very by very soon, I mean within the next couple of weeks, you'll probably see a... Uh, Oregon Laminations Corner Rounder thing. And I hope to get uh, an actual game down on the table before then, too, so I have some additional video to accompanying it. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I will see you around.